Well, howdy there, friends, and welcome to a brand new show that doesn't have a name yet. We might call it the Information Station or the Creative Highway or something like that. Something really cheesy that falls off the tongue. But what does have a name is me. I'm John Morris, artist, author, and coach for the Creative Mind, and a few other little bits and pieces. But the purpose of this show is to review things. And it's very, very simple, actually. Each week, I'm going to sit down with you guys and girls, and I'm going to review some different products. Because if you're a content creator, if you're an artist, if you're an author, if you're a musician, if you're a sketcher, a sculptor, whatever you might be, you need to know, especially in the digital age, this technological evolution which we live in, which product works best, which product works and does a job, which product is going to create in a nightmare in your life. But ultimately, you need to know which product is best for you and which can get the job done. Now, given the fact that I have been around long enough that, that Michelangelo was using me and wanting to use me as basically his blueprint when he was carving on David, information, some valuable insight, and I've got the agent experience as well that goes along with it to be able to help you make the right decisions. Now, as for me personally, I need to know certain things when I'm working with a phone or a laptop or whatever it might be. It's going to work quickly. It's going to do what it says on the tin. It's going to have all a few bells and whistles, but I don't need it to translate this, that, and the other language. I don't need it to look absolutely magnificent. I just need to know, is it going to work? Is it going to create great videos? Is it going to create great photos? Is it going to make my life easier? Or is it going to be a pain in the backside? So, with that in mind, we are going to review two very different phones. We're going to do this over three videos. So we're going to explore the Honor Magic 4 Lite in this video. In the next video, we are going to review the Google Pixel 6a. And then in the third and final video, we're going to put them against each other and see which one really is better. And here's the thing. One of them, I really enjoy using. One of them, I have never been so glad to send back in my life. But you're going to have to wait until the very end to see which one is which. So, let's begin, shall we? Let, let's begin looking at the Honor Magic 4 Lite. Now, I've been using this film maybe for about a week or two now. And you can see here, as soon as you open it up, it's got this uh, little piece of cardboard in there. And uh, nowadays, obviously, they, they don't give you a lot of things. So they literally want to just give you a little pin that you can push open your SIM uh, holder with. And again, it comes as standard, all nice and protected. Now, what I love about this, but I actually got it plugged in next door. But this Honor Magic 4 comes with an ultra fast charger that works unbelievably quick. Like in 15 minutes, I can take this from uh, maybe one or two percent battery charge all the way up to 100%. It charges insanely quick. I think it's like 66 times faster than uh, what, what a normal phone charge would be. Again, it comes with your instructions as standard, it comes with a few other bits and pieces, but one of the things that you will immediately notice is lacking, or certainly I did, is there is no uh, headphone port. There's no headphone jack anymore. That is because they're looking at doing away with all those. The, the reason being is, so they say, so as you have more space for cameras and for, for, uh, for batteries and, and for storage and whatever else is there. But that was a big shock for me. So if you're wanting to use headphones on either of these phones actually, you will need to get Bluetooth uh, headsets. You need to get Bluetooth headphones. Now I already had those, so it wasn't a big imposition to me, but for other people, that will let you know what's going on. So first of all, what I'm going to tell you is I love the size of this phone. It's a really nice phone. Now, to, to make it look a little bit more scientific, but more so so I don't have to see is squinting for, for the next 15 minutes, I'm gonna put my glasses on. So I absolutely love uh, the size of the screen. That's one of the biggest things that I looked at and I thought, yes, uh, because I've used other phones before, the Huawei P30, the Huawei P20, and they were smaller phones. They were lighter, but they were much smaller. Um, so for someone that, that is, is, you know, getting in their mid-30s and, and is looking to, uh, to, to, to see something a bit bigger, this actually, the Honor Magic 4, is a really good phone at 6.8 inches. It comes on really quickly, it's fast to load, it's got a great refresh time as you can see here. Uh, it really, there is no lag at all in this phone, it really works well. 
One of the things that I actually really love about this phone as well is yes, you can come in, you can put all your uh, your, your, your password in and everything, obviously like normal. It has facial recognition, but also on the side is a little bud. It's a, it's, a, it's a finger touch registration, which is super, super cool. To me, I'm used to putting my, my thumbprint in the, in the middle, uh, as we'll talk about in other videos. You know, sometimes it can be glitchy, sometimes it works really well, but with this, literally you just touch and pop, straight on. You see, see, watch. Oh, there you go, straight on. That don't lag. How cool is that? that I mean, th this is just li literally a really nice, fast phone. Um, and it is super, super awesome as well. For the price I paid for this, it was about £150. Um, I actually always look in the Amazon warehouse. So I'm looking for um, X... Uh, display stock. I'm looking for, I'm not looking necessarily for refurbished, but I'm looking for X display stock, uh, X testing stock, um, because you tend to get a really awesome foam there that has been used a couple of times, but then it's just been put away and can't be sold for first hand prices. So to buy this new, I believe, in the United States is £699. Uh, you may be able to get that cheaper elsewhere. Now, this came out a couple of years ago, uh, but again, it is just a fantastic little phone, on, honestly, that works really quickly. Now, before this, I had the Huawei P30. The big problem with the Huawei P30 was it overheated, and the battery literally went on fire. Um, that was my experience, and had I had the foresight then to cover that in a video and not panic and throw it in the sink, um, I would have done. But that's what happened. So anyway, one of the things with the Huawei that I really found was a drawback, and has been apparently in, uh, in many different reviews that, that's gone on, was the fact the storage. So this is, this, the, this is what I can't understand. It's exactly the same storage as the Huawei. But this one works a lot quicker. Okay, so it is 120 gig of storage that's on there. It isn't, as far as I'm aware, it might be expandable actually, I think down the bottom. Yes, it is expandable uh, with a nano SD card. Um, but like I say, it works really quickly. On here, you can get all of your apps that you want. So you get Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Google, uh, all of that kind of stuff. It is a really, really awesome phone and especially for the price. One of the things that I always love to test with phones like this is the camera. It's the first thing that I go to. Um, and with this, again, for the price, you have a nice little camera. You've got a wide screen, you've got a normal screen, and then you've got a, a zoom in, and it's times eight that it zooms into. Where it lacks, I think, is taking photos that are really, really detailed. So if I'm putting it up here against one of my seascapes, you know, it, it will take an all right photo. We'll obviously show you this a little bit more. Uh, the widescreen lens, it takes an all right photo. It doesn't necessarily focus in the best, but where, where this camera really does well, I would say for a budget camera is in the normal range. Where it really struggles is when you zoom in anywhere after three times, yeah, maybe 2.6, 2.5. It's still got some of the detail, but then it starts to get quite pixelated, uh, which just, for, for a creator, if you're trying to do something, you want it to be as good as possible. Um, so so that's, that's a little bit something there uh, that, that was a big drawback for me. Now, this has four cameras on the back, um, and as I say, it just didn't do it for me. That is one of the big things that I found with the Huawei uh, P20 and the P30. The camera quality was phenomenal. When you're going into video mode, again, it's 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 super cool. It does all right. It is kind of grainy, um, even in a normal. In the wide camera, yeah, it's not exactly the best, uh, but it, it's passable. It's passable. But I think if you're at a certain level, uh, in your art career, if you're in a st if you're starting out in your artistic career, it's a good film. I mean, it's a really good film for that. If you're just starting out, if your audience is expecting, you know, those dazzling videos and the the wow factor, this film is not going to give it for you. They're not going to give it to you. One of the things that surprised me about this phone in particular is the front camera. Uh, the front camera, I would actually argue, is better than the the reverse, um, which again was just ludicrous to me why this would be um but it works really really well uh, we're going to flip over obviously onto here so as you can see um it works really really well you know as you can see the picture's nice and clear 
the video behind me, yeah, it's it's detail quality enough that you can get some good stuff going on. Uh, these are some of my portraits and, and artworks that I've been doing. This one here is for a client. Uh, we'll show you in a little bit more detail later on. Um, but it works really, really well. In terms of a front camera, you can um, speak to people, you can do everything that you want to do. One thing that I found as well that really draws this camera, um, or really kind of pushes the phone down again in review, is the fact that the microphone is held underneath. Um, which means every time you're holding it, you have to hold it by the sides. You can't put your finger underneath, because otherwise it will muffle, as obviously that's just dumb. Um, but you can see there for yourselves a little bit that there are a few design flaws with it. Um, Honor are doing a fantastic job, and this is something I said to them in my review. Um, you, you guys are doing a fantastic job. Keep on going with the ideas that you've got, with the um, kind of thought process that you've got, but I would recommend moving the microphone either to the top, um, I, and I know obviously you talk in the bottom, but if I'm putting my finger under there, you know, that, and that's just personal preference. They'll probably turn around and say, well, don't put your finger there. Um, but also in the camera, if you could develop a camera that wasn't grainy, that was really awesome, and keep it around the hundred and, like I say, I spent 150, 156 pounds on it, maybe 150 pounds or, or whatever it was, um, and it was okay. You know, that for me is fine. Uh, but again, the camera really lets it down. So if you can sort out the microphone and you can sort out the camera, you've got a phenomenal phone here. You really have. It is a tremendous phone. The sound uh, as well. Let's go onto YouTube and um, let, let, let's put on a, a little bit of Mark Knopfler, shall we? Um, I was listening to him. So as you guys can see, as you can hear there, it's really clear sound and that's only on sort of half volume, so if we go up a little bit in volume... It's still relatively clear. Now what I really love about this phone in particular, the sound, especially at night, I like to listen to a lot of meditative uh, music at night, a lot of subconscious programming music, and that works really well for me. Keeps, you know, my mind level and keeps it focused on what I want. It has a setting on it where it's just audible. So I don't know if you can hear that, I'll just pull up the camera. So you can hear that just, okay, and it's not irritating, it's not annoying, it's not frustrating, and it's still quite clear. That's one of the things I love about this, the, the, the as I said, the, um, the speakers are really clear, the microphone when you speak into it is really clear as you can see obviously on the video. It is a beautiful size, it's, for me it was a great price and I really genuinely enjoy using this phone. So let's do a quick recap um, before we move on obviously to the next video um, on, on pluses and minuses of this one. So. The negatives for this, we'll start with that. Unfortunately, the placement of the microphone, it's not a good place, okay? Now maybe, as I say, that's because when I'm doing selfies, I'm posting my finger underneath because I want to make sure that I've got hold of my phone. Again, if you're spending that amount of money, you want to make sure it's safe and secure. The other thing is the camera. Unfortunately, that is the massive thing that lets this phone down. Um, again, as a content creator, you need your phone to do the best job possible. And I just feel with the, the back camera, even though it's quad, um, quad core, it is just not up to, up to scratch. And especially if you try and zoom in on something far away, it isn't good. Okay, now maybe that's because I've used the Huawei P20, the Huawei P10, and the Huawei P30, and Again, the zoom in on those is phenomenal. We've got the Huawei P40 coming in very, very soon, um, and I'm sure we'll be testing out the Huawei P50 um, very, very soon as well for you, wonderful people. Um, but literally, when you zoom in with using a Huawei, it makes such a difference. But we're not talking about Huawei, we're talking about Honor. Um, so definitely, the, the negatives are the, the microphone placement and the camera. The positives I can just rattle through them. The size is phenomenal. The screen quality is incredible. You can watch videos on it very comfortably. The sound is really, really good. Um, the, the front camera is awesome. For a front camera, it is phenomenal. It really is a great, great phone. Um, the amount of apps you can get on there is brilliant. 
the different sound qualities that are there that exist as well, the capabilities of this phone for being an introductory level phone is stunning. It really is. Um, I'm trying to think if, you know, there's other things I'm sure I can tell you on, on in, in great lighting, the camera works brilliantly, but in poor lighting, in a little bit of, you know, when we're trying to take photos of the, of the dog behind us or paintings or things, it just doesn't work well. One of the other things that I really struggle with this as a content creator, particularly an artist, is I need things to be quick, okay? So when I take a photo or I'm doing a video, I like to have video packages where I can literally just upload my videos, click a button and auto-generate a, um, a really cool reel or a really cool video that shows the best aspects of this you know, painting or picture that I'm working on. Unfortunately with this phone, you can't do that. Um, it, the, the software that's on there is from maybe about five or six years ago and again maybe because I've been working with Huawei's um, it, it, but, and that's just something that lets it down from a personal point of view, it's a lot more time consuming. So from a time point of view, I want something that's going to be quick, I want something that's going to you know, do the job, look really good, um, and unfortunately that's what lets this film down in my opinion. But if you're just starting out, if you're an artist, author, musician, creator, whatever you might be, looking for a phone that is, you know, anywhere between £150 to £200, you can get it on Amazon. You can get refurbished ones for a lot less than that. I've seen this advertised for £97, I think, was the, the, the lowest that I saw. Um, it is a phenomenal, phenomenal phone, and I don't think you'll be disappointed at all. Uh, and I've been using it now for close to three weeks, and, and it has been an absolute really cool phone to use. Um, but as I say, those are the only things that let it down. Have you used or explored anything of the Honor 4 Magic Lite? If so, do feel free to comment in the section below. As always, do the good stuff of liking, sharing, and subscribing. Tell a friend, because this could be the thing, the very thing that they need to hear, maybe in the hour of their struggle, where they're not certain where to go for their phone. But more importantly, if you want to help and support this channel, if you want to help us grow and you want to tell YouTube, look, this is a kick-ass channel that we really want to support, watch the next video. Because that's the best thing you can do is to watch the next video for me, for watch, for, for dear old John Morris. You know, watch the next video because it tells YouTube, hey, this channel has got some great content that we want to push, that we want to develop. And uh, of course, do all the other good stuff. So folks, that's going to do it for the Honor Magic 4 Lite in this one-on-one uh, -on -one review. The next video, of course, we're going to switch to the Google Pixel 6e. Now this has had a lot of mixed reviews that I've seen about this and um, in the next video you're probably going to see why. So click on over to the next video and I'll see you there. Have a phenomenal day. Namaste my friend.